Nobody knows what your catalytic converter is worth. That's it. That's the video. Oh, but your app is the best one, right? Or the one you keep hearing about is a total ripoff. Or this guy your uncle knows always pays the best. I've explored some options in the past as to how to determine the true value of your catalytic converter. And if you're scrapping a car or two and just shopping around to find the best price, I stand by the advice that I've given. But let's say buying and selling catalytic converters has become a more regular event in your recycling journey. The inconsistency of the prices and the way they can feel all over the map could leave you wondering, how are catalytic converter prices determined? And how can I access the real value? The right company can give you the precise value. And the rest are making their best guess based on another company's best guess. So, yes, that was a bit of theater at the beginning. But that's why the prices on different apps or various recyclers can feel all over the map. Don't worry, I can explain. Let's first be clear that the scrap value of a catalytic converter will come down to the amount of platinum, palladium, and rhodium that will be recovered from it. This can vary even across identical models depending on mileage of the vehicle, weather conditions, as well as any other potential damage to the ceramic of the converter. First, a little bit of history. Converters were first graded into two categories and much later on into six distinct categories based off ceramic content and unit origin. As the auto industry matured, emission standards also became stricter, and the technology behind developing auto catalysts packed more efficient designs into smaller packages. At this stage, small converters could be worth more than other larger ones, and throughout the 90s and early 2000s, it was the Wild West out there. Price lists were newly developed, and specific values were closely guarded secrets, and neither buyers or sellers dared to reveal who they were dealing with for fear of not getting the best price on either end. With such a varied number available, how does a catalytic converter recycling company put a fair value on these cans? That ultimately depends on the company's knowledge and technical ability. Companies have more than just categories these days. They have price lists and master catalogs, Price lists are averages per grading category. For each grading category, units are assayed and an average price for that category is calculated. So when you're viewing this list, the price you see for a category is the average of all the units assayed within that specific category. It's important to remember that not all companies with price lists assay their own units. A lot of them are relying on third-party data that can change with time, emission laws, and manufacturing. Depending on the price list you're viewing, it might not have been updated to reflect the market of today and the true metal prices. On the other hand, master catalogs allow you to search by serial number and get a more specific value. The price you see on the master catalogs is an average, calculated from assayed units of that specific serial number. Most importantly though, price lists and master catalogs are simply averages. This converter here has lived a unique life, and the number shown on a price list is just an average of other converters with the same serial number. It's not an exact representation of the metals that can be recovered from this one. The only way to put a true price on the value of a converter is to decan, process, sample, and test the ceramic material contained inside them, a process known as assaying. This is a labor-intensive process done in a lab, and very few companies have an in-house laboratory companies like today's video sponsor, PMR. PMR is an all-inclusive catalytic converter processor equipped with an in-house laboratory that conducts the assay process. I had the opportunity to sit down with their technicians and learn about what this means for someone curious about catalytic converter pricing and assay. When your material is assayed, you get the accurate scientific result of your PGM loadings. And since every converter lives a very different life, you want to get the true value of your material. The assay process ensured that. And having a recycler with an in-house lab is important? Well, for your assay result, you can't rely on someone who's relying on someone else to get your results. So having an in-house uh, laboratory ensure that you can reinvest quickly in your business. And as a recycler, that's a really good things. Now, obviously, I wanted to look under the hood. What actually tells you what the contents are in a converter? 
In our industry, there's two primary technologies that we rely on. It's uh, XRF Benchtop and ICP machine. So the XRF Benchtop uses the uh, secondary X-rays to measure the PGMs and the uh, ICP machine measure the intensity of light emitted by the homogenized sample. What we often see that shouldn't be used is the XRF gun because you cannot have an accurate result measuring each piece individually. You have to blend it and homogenize your sample and uh, XRF gun don't permit it. And assay results are better? Well, with assay result, you can view all the available data regarding the PGM loading in your units. Uh, you can view the information by material type and metal with PPMs, allowing you to create a historical account of your returns and help you better understand your material. All right, Alex is the science guy today, not me. And although I'm not familiar with the finer points of the assay process, I do understand why they wouldn't usually do all of that work for each individual converter. It wouldn't be cost effective. It's way more efficient to do them in batches. So knowing that, how does a recycler use the tools they do have available to determine a price where everyone is well paid? I went back to Ryan from the previous episode to talk numbers. Uh, every converter in the world has to get paid throughout the process at the end through an assay recovery. So that's the only true way to get what we call well paid. But again, it really depends on who you ask. If someone does a transaction at a very small level, you know, one, two converters, maybe well paid to that person is just them getting an, a fair price and a, and a payment for that converter. So I can't really say that that's not well paid for, for that individual. But for our level, um, we don't buy anything by the piece. Everything is done through assay. But it doesn't matter if any buyers are buying by the piece, whoever they eventually sell to has to do it on recovery because every converter in the world goes through that method. At this point, I'm starting to understand why there seems to be an air of confusion around pricing these things out. A recycler will buy a catalytic converter per unit and their offer would be based on a current price list or master catalog. When they go to sell those units and ideally profit, what they get out of them will directly reflect the precious metals that are recovered from them in bulk at current market price. So why do these price lists feel so difficult to access? They're definitely they're more available than they were in the past, but that really right. has been the transition of our industry. Like years past, listen, we're talking about over a decade ago, there was no information available or not very much because the companies that had the information, that was their leverage to make more money. Right, so they would only right. educate or give whatever tools and resources they had available, so then they can control profit margins and make more money. But as obviously like technology grew, word of mouth, um, you know, new companies with new technologies coming in and sharing that uh, available knowledge to the the public, mm -hmm. um, that really changed things. Right, so our industry has been very secretive over a decade ago. And, um, but there was not a lot of companies assaying at that point. Everything was really done by the piece. And the only companies assaying it were the, the very large companies at the end of the, the road. But now, you know, assay is, is basically made available to really all, uh, all types of volumes now because the minimums have been shrunk. It's getting better all the time. But when a recycler is buying catalytic converters, they're making an investment and taking on risk. So how do they make sure they aren't overpaying and just losing money? You definitely want to work with a system that updates prices uh, currently, right? Current market every minute, not even once a day, because sometimes that could make you overpay, just the difference between the morning and the afternoon price. Right. So you want to work with a system that updates current market pricing. Um, you can put in different simulated markets and, and really, um, as you be able to buy and sell and get that history back of what you made, that's really where you'll be able to kind of go and, and purchase more competitively um, once you get the history and the confidence that you're making money doing it. So at PMR, like we have many tools that helps uh, companies with that, um, with that problem. You know, we've got photo grading, a master catalog, grading sheets. We have a VIN and trim tool that helps with buying converters. So, um, you know, it's just really having tools, resources and support um, to confidently do it. Definitely want to be able to buy and sell that converter within a, a reasonable time frame, let's say within a month or two. Um, because if you're buying a converter, you know, in January and you're trying to sell it in December, it, there, there's just too much exposure there with the market. You know, metals are going in opposite directions. Okay, 
I want to pause real quick because I think what Ryan said just there is actually more important than I first realized. When a recycler is buying catalytic converters and they're paying their supplier based off of a price list, they need to include a certain margin of profit. However, they also need to base this margin on how long it's going to take them to collect their refiner's minimum order quantity because the longer it takes them to turn over their investment, the greater their exposure to potential changes in the market, the greater their risk. So a smaller recycler needs a higher margin of profit because they don't have the rapid turnover to guarantee their expected return. To summarize, I think my frustration with trying to find an accurate price for an individual converter was based on a gross misunderstanding of what those price lists and master catalogs are actually for, and the context in which the information is intended to be used. Recyclers have a few choices when it comes to where they're getting their information, and the advantage of working with a toll refining partner is that they're accessing the true scientific value of the material, not just a number average off of a price list that may not have been updated for a while. Partnering with a processor means live access to the most accurate and up-to-date data, meaning more accurate returns on one's material, as well as live prices of PGMs, helping recyclers understand, evaluate, and buy more. I hope this helps, because it definitely helped me understand how the prices are determined and what a price list is and isn't. I look forward to the next episode where we'll explore the lab a little more and see just what goes into the assay process and how a recycler turns all this material into cold hard cash. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave it better than you found it, and keep doing the thing.